<laughs> Do you know how to play the controller? Sort of. <laughs> Who do we want to go? Uh, go the big muscle mans. You want to go muscle man? Yeah. How do you unlock the other dude bros? Um, first time I played, I unlocked like three dudes by accident. Ah, oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's one of those games. Yeah. Let's go steroids. Start loaded. Less accurate, fully automatic weapons. Let's do it. Alright, what do we got? Oh get? god, he's so muscle. He's so big. I've never yeah. played I never played with this on a controller, so. Are yeah. you gonna be bad? Yep. See? <laughs> I'm already on. You might just want to put the keyboard on the mouse in your lab, dude, because you were gonna fucking lose. Well <laughs> really bad. <laughs> no, but I can't play with the keyboard now. Because we fucking we okay, we kinda fucked it. Oh, so you can't actually go to the settings yeah, to change it back from keyboard mode. So what happened, right? We launched the game. We were like, all right, let's play with controller because it's easier. Uh, and then we can do co-op because this game is co-op. So we're like, all right, put it on controller mode. Uh, and then it disables keyboard controls entirely. So you can't go to the options menu uh, unless to there's something it off. <laughs> unless there's something we're missing. Yeah, so uh, like we pressed all the buttons, tried using the mouse to keyboard. I don't get it. All right, so what? What is? What Some is? Fucking what demon is? Magic. What is this? This is nuclear throne. Oh god! Yeah, Nathan, that's the pretty worms. abundantly clear from the moment people clicked the video that it was going to be nuclear throne. Yeah. What? Why? Okay, hang on. How do I switch? And you don't even, you know play the game properly. There we go. Fucking All right. Grenade launcher and laser pistol. Mm -hmm. How? Oh wow! And I think you can like dual wield. So what is Nuclear Throne? It is by Vlambia. It's the guys who did um, Luft Rousers. Luft Rousers. And this was a Game Jam game, I think. But then they fleshed it out. Yeah, they, they're still doing it. All right, what do I want? Extra chests. You more. want that early? Corpses fly and hit harder. Push to limit the number of walls. Better accuracy. More chests. Yeah, sure. Um, so it's basically just a roguelike shooter, kind of. Like, there's not really much to it. You just shoot dudes. Yeah, it's low go level by level. What's yep. like, what's like max level? I have no idea. I haven't got past the f third or fourth one. I think it's... I haven't got past the third one. You haven't got past the third one. So it's hard. It's fairly, fairly difficult. It's, it's probably not. I'm probably just bad. Like, to be honest. But there, are there any persistent upgrades? That's very important. I don't think there are. No. I think it's all just... Fucking good. Yep. Games like this that give you persistent upgrades ruin themselves. Yeah. Like, the reward for a difficult game is like getting your head around it, mastering it, and then beating it with strategies. Yeah, and then just like being when like, games nah, add man. And upgrades. It's like, nah, just play it long enough and you'll win anyway, and then you don't get to play anymore. Now, Rogue Legacy was still a decent game. Rogue Legacy, you needed the persistent upgrades. There, That's a different genre. That's not a roguelike. Yeah. It had roguelike elements. Oh, God. It was very it's close to roguelike, but the it's persistent the upgrades game. make it not at all roguelike. Oh, Jesus. Oh, fuck. What the fuck? Like, same thing. Spelunky is a proper... Whoa, you fucking died. I totally just blew up. I have no idea what did that. Yeah, Spelunky's a proper roguelike. Like, um, anything with persistent upgrades is not. Because it's persistent. And yeah. each time it gets well, easier. Obviously. You're a sword man. Yeah, sword's cool. You can just hold it down. Wait, no, you can't. But, you can slow down time. You can go like... Good. Could you cut projectiles? I don't think you can. Oh, you totally can. Awesome! So this guy's pretty good. <laughs> the animation style is fantastic. Yeah, and they, oh, yeah. Love, they love their screen shake. Fucking, you heard, you probably heard me say this a million times, but the smaller the player character is on the screen, just the better the game tends to be. Yeah, I don't know, you get so much more, you get afforded so much space for stuff. Well, just more things can happen. But, but... If it's too small, like, I want to be the guy I think is the smallest a character can be, be before it's like, oh, ridiculous. I can't see shit. Uh, no, but sometimes the tone of the game requires you to have a big character. I like, fuck those games. Like, like, scary games, you need a big character. No. Yeah, I totally do. No. Yeah. No. Yeah, because you gotta be like claustrophobic. I'm scared and had fight was first person, the play character was... tiny. I'm scared was a first person game. Yeah. But there's no... <laughs> what? It's the, like you can't. Uh, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, alright. I'll consider that. You can't play anything. You can't play a size in a first-person game. Fuck, what's a scary game with small player characters? Oh, uh, two health already. Fucking the series Yahtzee did the fucking five days of strange game. I I still want to play that. I should probably. We, I want to stream that actually. They're really spooky. Yeah. And you need a guide to beat them. Nah, but you're super spooked at stuff anyway. 
No. Well, actually, no, that is good spooky. Like, they're actually, like, like, like there's one jump scare in the whole of the first game. <laughs> and it fucking, I was, like, traumatized for, like, weeks. It was so, no, it was so good. Yeah. Like, it's not even ju a jump scare so much as something happens when things don't ordinarily happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Yahtzee, fucking Yahtzee made it. Uh, zero punctuation guy. Yeah, which is weird. But he knows his shit, so he was like, yeah, I'm going to set up uh, a routine. And then oh, slowly... Fuck, I'm so dead. Because the plot of the game is, like, you... You're the robber Trilby, which is the most autistic name of all time. Yeah. You go into this house trying to rob it, and then you can't get out, and you realize that other people are trapped there as well. And then people start dying. Yeah. And then it's set over five days, but each day is a routine. And then at the end of each day, at some point you fall asleep and start dreaming, and you don't know when or where. Oh, and something fuck. fucked up happens, <laughs> like something scares the shit out of you, and then you wake up next day. And then somebody else has gone missing or died, or something's happened. The house is slightly different. Something like weird is going on. Yeah, schedules and shit in horror games is crazy. Hover. Huh? What? Illuminati. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, fucking schedules and shit in like horror games and stuff is super good. It was. It's. Re he does it like really well. Him. He hasn't really made any other games. Not really. He only made a few. Then he started um, doing the zero punctuation, and that took the fuck off. Did he not? Did he make? Did he make them while he's doing it? Or was that? It's true. Surely before. Huh. I think he was a reviewer, but Zero Punctuation isn't ridiculously old. The games are quite old. They're click and play era. So around the time when the original Spunky came out, yeah. the original Cave Story, and the original... Well, no one knows it, but Eternal Daughter. It was a big deal at the time. Eternal Daughter. Which we have to play at some point. What is it? But getting into it works really hard. It's the game that came out the same time as Cave Story and was like the Cave Story competitor. Oh, didn't you tell me about that? Yeah. Yeah. It's well, like the same as Cave... It's the same as Cave Story. Fucking as as write it down. Some kills regenerate HP seems super good. Get full HP and some ammo. No. Bam. But yeah, fucking, um, beware of, beware of dadders. Beware of dadders. Statues. But yeah, Wait. Eternal Daughter is, like, on par with Cave Story. It's just, it didn't... The devs it's didn't follow up on it. What you, oh, but like they also made other shit. I forget what else they made, but they've made something else that you would have heard of. You reckon? Well, because they're... They were quite young at the time. Like, all the click and play guys. Like, um, Destruction Carnival and shit. Oh, that was those guys. But remember there was that guy so who made- So then it, it's gonna look like shit, is it? No, it looks great. It's one of the- it's one of the pretty ones. But if I can remember that dude who did the video who was like, I spent 20 years making a game, blah blah blah. What? Remember that guy? Which guy? He made a- he released a game called Something's Adventure, like Sword Quest or something. And he released a video on YouTube being like, hey, it was big- it was- it went really viral. It was like, um, this guy spent, like, his entire- like, he started making a game when he was 16. And he finished when he fucking... I'm gonna Google it. <laughs> what? So what is that... Are you anyway, he made a video promoting this game so that he could get people interested in it. And the video was kind of like half the history of Click and Play. Which was like, hey, yeah, I started getting into games because people were making shit like Spelunky in fucking Game Maker and like Cave Story and then fucking um, other shit like Destruction Carnival, which is one of the big ones. Yeah. Um, which is why we played it that time. Well, destruction. It, that's a really fucking good game, right? I don't know, I don't know, why I you don't know your, man. <laughs> it's one of the earliest. I'm not really sold on it. Nathan, it's one of the first indie games. I made, so, it's yeah. just made by one dude. I, see, I can't appreciate it's it. It's fucking. If you didn't have fucking Destruction Carnival, you would never have this. I can't appreciate it because, you know, the time. The no, because you have fucking ADHD and you need to be convinced so much. No, I can't appreciate things. You need to fucking. You need to be there at the time to appreciate a game. No. So much of a game's appreciation factor is when it was made. That's art. You need to. Nathan, in order to appreciate art, you need to have context on when, how, where it was made, who made it, why, and then you can start to appreciate it. Which is why cunts go to the Louvre, take a fucking selfie in front of the Mona Lisa, and say it's not really that great. No. <laughs> The context is so much more important than the actual artwork itself. Yeah, but a lot of people... So if you want to enjoy Destruction Carnival, you don't need to have been there at the time. You just need to have an iota of imagination and say, Hey, this was this is a game made in a time when nobody made games independently. It was all studios. It was really expensive. And then somebody released a platform that allowed you to make games at home. And these dudes pushed those engines to the limits and made really cool games. But it's, it's hard and found to, it, like... Made the foundation of it's fucking... It's hard to, the like, appreciate how big indie games you like. It's hard to appreciate how That's big on a you, motherfucker. Is. That's on you. Because it's like. That's your fault. We live in a time when fucking indie games are a dime a dozen. So it's like. And those guys paved the way for it. Did I get a new character? You did. Who's this guy? Rebel. Portals. And he has allies. Oh, you Yeah, that's like your fucking this. fault. If you can't. 
Did you just lose health something in that one? Yeah. Just checking out works. Yeah, if you can't fucking, um... Take the... Create, like, the imagination required to appreciate something that's not happening right now. Then that's your fault. You've got to fucking... I don't think it's anybody's fault. And, like, if you want to be a game dev, you've got to... appreciate it. You've got to be able to appreciate it. You've got to work for that. You've got to make it happen. I don't think you have to... there's something there. I don't think you have to appreciate it. You have to learn from it. No, both. You can't learn from something without appreciating it. Without knowing how it was made. Yeah, like, I you're sitting... You're right. I came in and you were fucking playing with fucking Unreal Engine and shit. If you want to fucking do that, learn from the dudes, the first dudes to do it. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like fucking the like, first... Because before that, it was like fucking, you know, the dudes who are into freaking and hacking phone lines and like... They'd also freaking. muck around and fucking make Hang games on, is, and is shit. Is freaking a real word? P it's with a PH. Yeah, that, that's because that's on every IT exam. I've never... You've learned. never actually learnt about freaking? No. What happened was, back in the day, phones, like pay phones and shit, and public phones, yeah, yeah, they wouldn't communicate digitally, they'd use analog signals, which were translated into tones. So when you dial the number, it'd open a connection to the exchange, and you dial boop, 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 boop. Yeah. yeah, man. Right? Yeah. So you're, you're literally sending the tone, like it's the pitch of the thing you're dialing that sends yeah. the tone. So if you got, they had these things, there were these little whistles that came in the Captain Crunch boxes. And just by some insane coincidence, those whistles were tuned to the exact pitch, which opened up like a debug thing in the phone exchange. And then... Me? I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And then so freaking started when some dudes were like, hey, you can whistle. If you, let's take the time to try and work out what shit we can do to phones just by imitating the tones that happen internally in the phone system. Yeah. So they'd imitate the things and use like the debug menu basically to make free calls and call people from like other numbers and fuck with the system yeah and it was called freaking yeah because yeah. it was like a big hobby where they were trying to work out like exactly how the system works and then they changed it and then yeah well that you know like it caught on and it was like on your knees and shit like you know freakers you know they are freakers are fucking you're you, fine you can fuck with caller id you can fuck with pages you can do all sorts of crazy shit yeah and then people started using it to like, you know, steal things and like, whatever, whatever. But, those like, yeah, no, the OG nerds and shit. The OG nerds. The OG nerds. So then, yeah, you fucking, you got these dudes, in the same vein, give, getting given these like, home game development kits, and pushing them and making extraordinary things, like Destruction Carnival, which is a fucking extraordinary achievement, considering it's made by like, one more like, fucking like, 16 year old dude. Just yeah. chilling on forums, being like, hey guys, I made this. And it's fun. And it's really hard. Yeah. And it's, it sounds and looks like shit, but fucking it's fun, you know? Where did you make it in? Uh, click and play. Oh, is that actually, that's the thing? I think that was the engine. It was definitely the thing that used to compile it, because every single click and play game came with the same install thing, and came with the same, like, in the same package. And I used, to, I used to, like, Little Fighter was one of those games. Was that click and play? It was around that same time, though. Like, early 2000s, late 90s, when all these games, like, were just like coming out like freeware when freeware was at its like peak yeah back before it stopped being a thing for some reason when fucking free to play then became the word yeah the buzzword oh god dude holy shit oh god Nathan oh. But yeah fucking yeah if you reckon destruction carnival shit you gotta learn you gotta learn your history no but it is like kind of shit <laughs> no it's like, fucking great right now right now it's you want alright like do you, do you really think you could do better no. Using the shit that he no, had at the time. No, like, I'm not saying I could do better. You're just saying if you ignore the ex extraordinary achievement the game is, it's shit. I'm just saying I don't enjoy it. Yeah. At face value compared to games made today yeah, by saying teams of dozens of people who learnt yeah. from that game, it's shit now. Yeah. Yeah, you're a fucking retard. If you actually, if you actually can, re like, somehow manage I'm to reduce... I'm saying, I'm saying I don't enjoy it as a game. That's too not... It's too simple for me. Oh my god, I fucking hate you so much, <laughs> dude. Like... Hey, that's a fucking that's an opinion someone can have. It's not an opinion. It is. It's the worth of something someone's created, and you're putting it in a box where it's not worth anything, and that's so unfair. It is. It is unfair. It's probably totally unfair. To you're him. doing it because it's easy. Oh god, I'm so fucked. Like it's challenging to fucking Fuck. find value in shit that's past its time. Yeah, yeah, it is, and there's plenty of shit that you can but do. But as for. a fucking someone who wants to develop games. You can't be closed-minded like that. You have 
It's your responsibility if you ever want to get anywhere. I can appreciate the effort that they would have put in to do it. Oh, I, you're the man eater from fucking Spl uh, from Splunky. Is this the guy? What does he do? Whoa! I think if you touch foods, you eat them. No, he, I really don't want to touch a dude and find out, to be honest. Touch a dude. Well, you told me to. That's nah, good. don't. You wouldn't. <laughs> I guarantee I will not eat dudes. Yeah, that's some um. Yeah, no, nah, like. I can appreciate that he fucking was one dude working with some shitty system uh, and then he put together this thing that even by today's standards is playable and enjoyable but all I'm saying is- But that's where the buck stops. Like, it's just as easy to be a cunt and be like, yeah nah this painting's not as good as fucking this- It's a slippery slope is what I'm saying. Well art, I think, because the Mona Lisa still stands up as a fucking sick art piece. No it doesn't. Totally does. There's nothing exciting about it. It's, it's just he was the first dude to do all the shit in the Mona Lisa. That's why when you look at it, no one fucking weeps when they see it. <laughs> Unless they know the history and how important it is. Because after he'd made that painting, everybody was like, oh shit. And started doing exactly what fucking ate it. Yeah. Picasso was the first cunt to do all that shit. The That's why it's fucking important. The That's the only reason it's important. I don't know. I still think it's pretty impressive. It's as not. A painting. You're literally just thinking that because TV and books and shit have told you that it's of worth. I've looked but if at you a saw it, of it with no context, you'd be like, I don't care. Because art today is yeah. so much more advanced. Nah, if some fucking baby was born into the world with the brain of like a grown man, and they're like, here's a Mona Lisa, what do you think? They'd be like, yeah, it's right. It's a picture of a person. Well, if it was the first painting you'd ever seen. Yeah, I'm sure if it was the first painting well, you'd ever seen. It's the first anything you've ever seen, it's amazing. But in the context of today's art, the Mona Lisa has, has, has no value. Its value is as a historical marker. It's what it's it's the significance of it beyond what you see. It's he was the first cunt to do this. Practice these techniques. I don't know actually what the fuck he did with it. I watched what, videos at one point because I was like, what was so important about it? There's something to do with the shading, it was like fucking Renaissance bullshit, like perspective. Doing like an enigmatic figure that wasn't royalty, blah blah blah. A whole bunch of shit that he did. because it was just a lady? It was just a lady. Yeah, like just some just some random ass lady. Yeah, so but he put like so much that. work into doing this really unique piece about her, and people got enraptured by it. It was really important. Yeah, but point is like, Destruction Carnival is in the same vein. It's unimpressive technically. Destruction Carnival is comparable to Mona Lisa. Yeah, in the, in, in the <laughs> sense that for a fucking oh shit, it's a sledgehammer. It was important to an art form in that it developed it and made everyone be like, oh shit, this is what's possible for one dude to do. Let's step it up. Yeah, and Destruction Carnival. Yeah, well, sure, it wouldn't have fucking. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to fall into the trap where I'm saying like oh yeah video games or painting are more important than each other because they're both equally as important but they both fill the same role in the sense that looking at them today nothing impressing about them but what's important about them is what they did at the time yes and I thought it'd be fun to like you got a sledgehammer right now? yeah man it's a plant with a sledgehammer you got a problem with that? But yeah destruction carnival fucking play it destruction carnival google it it's a good game. Like, well, we played it. Enough, we, pl we play it. Watch us play it. And watch Nathan be like, Yeah, it's fucking impressive. And I'm like, Fuck you, man. I liked the skeleton head. I liked the um, really shitty audio. Clips. I liked the gang 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 He actually did that. He actually did that. He recorded himself doing that. He was. He may have been the first recorded attempt at a gang gang. May, well, may well have been. You never know. But yeah, fucking, um, there you go. That's that. That's that conversation. Well. The Importance of Art by Jim, thank you. Well, not importance, but significance, then. <laughs> importance and significance are pretty interchangeable. Yeah. Yeah, fucking, that's fucking why- Fucking rat! Death. That's why I think... <laughs> when people get frustrated at kids for being like, Yeah, old games are shit, they're bad graphics, or like, this game doesn't look pretty enough. It's not that they're being- Nah, but some games are just still sick. It's like Mega it, Man 1. Well, it's not them being ignorant, and it's not them... Whatever, it's just that kids- don't have the context. Or at least people without the sort of passion to dig in uh, don't know how to properly appreciate shit that's not. Um, Alright. I reckon we're done with this episode. Yeah. Or this series. I don't know. But straight up, if you're if you're a 13 year old kid and you fucking like, all games are shit, suck a fucking dick. Like, actually <laughs> suck a fucking dick. You have no idea what the fuck you're talking about. You don't know what's good. You literally, you look at shit and then something deep inside you just randomly tells you how you feel about it and then you just fucking feel that way about it. You have no control about how you feel about shit. Shut the fuck up. Just enjoy or don't enjoy things. Don't make reviews. Don't try to appreciate anything. Just fucking wait six years 
do shit, get by, do get good at sport. Just get good at sport. The only thing you'll be grateful you did as a kid is get good at sport. You wanna have a look at what this little blue dude is doing? He's loving it. Nah, he's pulling the worm back. Ah, oh. poor thing. He looks bored. <laughs> I think everyone's bored at this fucking campfire. Cause they're not shooting shit. All right, we're down. We out. Yeah. Fuck thirteen-year-olds. <laughs> Literally have sex with them. It'll it'll mess them up, and Whoa. they might actually grow up to be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We took a bit of a dark turn here today. I have to apologize for what my co commentator turned. To. The train doesn't what? stop. <laughs> the train doesn't stop. I gotta get out of here. Holy shit. Holy <laughs> fuck! Jesus. Is there, oh, any, is there any other games we can do today? No, we're done. We done? <laughs> you sure? You finished us, Jim. We're over.